there you are <laughs> I was wondering where you were to be honest and there you are right in front of me as I speak to you now here we go then hello it's YouTube it's live it is of course English addict on Wednesday and I hope you are feeling very good today here we go once again it is time to practice your English listening and I hope you are ready to go yes we are all here together again hi everybody this is mr. Duncan in England how are you today are you okay I hope so are you happy well are you happy I really hope you are feeling happy today we are back once again and yes we are back to our usual three times a week for those who are still a little bit confused I have one or two people asking mr. Duncan where were you today you, we didn't see you on YouTube and the reason for that is because I am not doing my daily live streams anymore so from now on we are doing it's a little bit different by that I mean <laughs> we are only doing it three times a week Sunday Wednesday and Friday there you can see right now on your screen the days of the week and also the time as well so the days are Sunday Wednesday Friday from 2 p.m. UK time so now you know for those who don't know who I am you might be thinking here who are you we don't recognize your face well I don't know why you don't recognize my face I've been on YouTube for a very long time <laughs> so here we are again once more I teach English on YouTube my name well there it is you can see it now on the screen and what I actually do is I teach English I talk about the English language I am a little bit different some people have said that they have said I am a little bit different my teachers my mother father in fact the rest of my family in fact everyone I know to be honest in my whole life so that's what I do I teach English but a little bit different different from everyone else hello to the live chat oh yes we have lots of people here already hello Mosen hello to you also Annie Vitas Wafe Francesca and also Dia Hakim hello to you in Germany we have weather like Great Great Britain apparently well here today you might be able to see behind me we have some sunshine however it is a little bit cold and that is the reason why I am wearing my jumper today one thing you might notice <laughs> and this is something I love about what I'm wearing today you might notice that my watch look my watch matches <laughs> my jumper it actually goes with it it actually matches isn't that interesting so this matches this they are the same color they are very similar so I thought that was quite interesting I didn't realize until a few seconds ago as I came out of the house I suddenly thought wait a minute my watch is the same color as my jumper it almost looks like I planned it however sadly I didn't I didn't plan any of it to be honest hello Annie I have missed your lessons mr. Duncan on those days when you weren't here well I'm back to doing three lessons a week three live streams though so I'm still here live I haven't stopped doing my live streams I'm still here live however we are doing things a little bit different because I will only be here for three days a week but I'm here I'm still here I'm not going anywhere despite some of the rumors 
yes we have lots of things to talk about today but first of all yes we have made it through to the middle of the week we are very far away from monday but also we are very far away from friday you might say we are equidistant from both weekends yes it's Wednesday <laughs> oh unfortunately I haven't got my echo sadly today we don't have the echo unfortunately we don't have the echo because I'm outside I couldn't resist coming outside it isn't a brilliant day I'll be honest with you it is quite cold but I am braving the elements I am braving the elements oh by the way did you know here in England not the UK but in England now it is important that I get this right so I'm not talking about the UK I'm talking about just England today many people went back to work as you may have read in the newspapers or you may have seen some people mentioning a certain situation that has been going on for the past two nearly three months for some people you may have heard we are coming out of lockdown and today is the day when a lot of people are now going back to work can you believe it so we've been in this situation now for eight weeks almost eight weeks two months we've been like this in this situation however and it is a very big however there seems to be a little bit of confusion because the announcement that was made at the start of this week seems to have confused a lot of people because we are being told to do one thing but also we are being told to do the opposite thing at the same time so it all seems a little bit strange to be honest it all seems a little bit strange at the moment excuse me I just have to do something <laughs> Do you ever see something out of the corner of your eye and it's really annoying and it's still annoying me now I might have to sort that out later where was I we've all gone back to work here in the UK <laughs> well almost everyone however some people have become a little bit confused by the messages that we've been receiving from the government here in England it is important that I specify England because of course the UK is made up of England Wales Scotland and Northern Ireland so this only concerns England at the moment so there have been some strange comments made by the government here in the UK you might actually describe these things as conflicting a very interesting word the word conflicting so when we talk about conflicting things we are using the word conflict or conflict so conflict two things that are opposites so you might have a conflicting message so maybe you are trying to tell people something however your message <laughs> becomes very confusing because the things you are telling people to do are opposites they have conflict they are conflicting they are conflicting instructions or maybe conflicting requests so we are being told this week some very strange things we are being told to do one thing but also we are being told to do the opposite and for many people it has caused 
quite a lot of confusion for example a conflicting message is one that often creates confusion and chaos and that is exactly what is happening here in the UK at the moment we have a conflicting message in fact we have many conflicting messages at the moment here in the UK so the government here have told us they've told us to do things that conflict with each other they conflict they go against each other so a conflicting message is one that often creates confusion and chaos so the advice that we've been given here in England the reason why I have to say England is because other parts of the UK Scotland and Wales they are actually giving their own advice about when to go back to work so this at the moment only concerns us in England at the moment so it only concerns us here in England so we've been told here is one of the things that we've been told by the government please go to work but stay at home go to work but stay at home so if you have to stay at home to work please stay home however please also go back to work so if you can work at home <laughs> stay at home however you must go back to work you can now leave the house and go back to work already you can see that there is a little bit of confusion there so some people don't know if they have to stay at home or go back to work but actually when they say go back to work do they mean leave the house and go back to work so a lot of people today have actually gone back to work physically they've actually left the house and they've traveled to their place of work so today railway stations bus stations many people were commuting from one place to another today they were going to work however they were actually leaving the house to go to work but also the message we received at the start of this week was stay at home stay at home if you can but all but go to work by leaving the house so how can you stay at home if you need to work from home or if you can work from home but you can also go to work which means that you physically leave your house and go to work so as you can see there is a little bit of conflict there those instructions seem to conflict with each other here's another one so we are being told to leave our houses we are being told to travel to work however <laughs> this gets even more confusing trust me it gets very confusing in a few moments travel to work but don't use public transport <laughs> avoid it so travel to work you can travel to work if you want but please avoid or don't use public transport so how are you supposed to get to work not everyone has a car not everyone drives if you work in London many people commute by bus or they use the underground trains or they use the trains that run above the ground <laughs> so as you can see another very conflicting message here announced this week you can travel to work leave the house travel to work but don't use public transport to make things even more confusing they are running public transport so today there are many trains many buses and they are running normally <laughs> but we are being told that we can't use them What's going on? 
so travel to work but please avoid public transport even though you need public transport to get to work and public transport is available apparently what they are trying to do at the moment they are trying to make sure that people keep their safe distance whilst on the trains and on the buses I don't know how you can do that have you ever been on a train have you ever traveled by train I must be honest with you traveling by train is an unpleasant thing it's an unpleasant situation here in the UK trust me Andy hello Andy Andy says I always travel to work by foot well you are okay you see there are many people who walk to work if you are lucky you can just walk to work maybe you live in a city or a town so yes it is possible but at the moment we are we are really confused with the advice and instructions that we are being given by the, the, the government here in the UK we are all a little bit confused because the messages we are being given conflict they they don't go together they are opposites <laughs> hello Lewis oh hello Lewis Mendez is here today hello Lewis nice to see you by the way I have a I have a woodpecker just behind me and sometimes I can hear it tapping on a tree I can Anna Pika says very conflicting messages I agree with you mr. Duncan they might get in confusion they might create confusion so sometimes you can say things you can give advice that might be conflicting two things don't go together they conflict they do not fit together and that can be anything to be honest that could be actually anything whatsoever Pedro Belmont is here today I hope you are feeling better Pedro due to your recent news can I just say Mr. Steve has been very worried over the past few days because he has been feeling ill as well I don't want to take your you're suffering away Pedro but I'm just saying mr. Steve also has been suffering we don't know what it is but maybe or maybe not it might be that thing we don't know we don't know hello Marina Marina I'm saying hello to Marina I hope you are okay we have a lot of conflicting messages do you want to see another one there are quite a few of them <laughs> here's another one conflicting messages go anywhere but don't go out huh? what? What? what 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 are you trying to do to us are you trying to make our brains explode go anywhere but don't go out okay don't go out but you can go anywhere so if you want to visit some some scenic countryside view if you want to travel to a nice area you can you can go anywhere but please don't go out and if you do go out or if you stay at home you must also be alert as well be alert at home in your house <laughs> an environment that you are very familiar with you must be alert at home go anywhere but don't go out so you can go anywhere you can travel to a nice beauty spot and have a picnic but you can't go out okay could somebody please explain these things to me I like to think sometimes I am an intelligent person I'm not brainy I'm not Einstein but sometimes I hear things and they really do confuse me and I think this is a very good situation a very good situation Mika is here also Husna Partridge 
hello to English English hello English English I like your name by the way English 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 times two I like it I like it a lot I really really do it is not confusing you can go to work by bike cars and private buses as it is in my country says Lil however we are being told that we can't use public transport however the public transport is actually being run so we're being told to avoid the things that are being provided for us you see can you see now why it's a little bit confusing Alessandro hi mr. Duncan and mr. Steve you are in my heart thank you very much that's very kind of you to say Vitesse everything we hear is an opinion not a fact everything we see is a perspective not the truth I like that yes that's very very profound however sometimes when you when you ask for advice and especially if it is a trusted group or organization you expect the advice to make sense there are people sitting around a big table in London and they are coming up with these suggestions some of the most brilliant minds of the 21st century are sitting around and they are coming up with these pieces of advice here's another one this is my favorite I think this is my favorite <laughs> of all the advice this has to be the best one do you want to see it I love this one this is my favorite one <laughs> you can visit your parents but only see one of them you can visit your parents but you can only see one of them so unfortunately you have to make a choice so if both of your parents are still with you they are still alive and you want to go and see them unfortunately you have to make a very awkward decision which is to choose <laughs> which one you actually want to speak to or see <laughs> hello mum mum and dad hello guess what I'm coming to see you but um, can you just tell dad that I'm not going to see him at all because the government told me I can only see one of you I can only talk to one of you so so dad dad I'm sorry we, we, I won't be seeing you you have to stay upstairs <laughs> but mum yes I, I will be seeing you definitely but dad I'm sorry no you will have to stay in the wardrobe but I can speak to mum so there it is visit your parents but you can only see one of them so unfortunately you will have to make a decision as to which parent you are going to see if they are still living together <laughs> which these days is quite rare when you think about it it is visit your parents but only see one of them so you have to make a choice so whilst you're driving to your parents to see them you in your mind you are trying to work out which one do I like more <laughs> do I want to see my mother more than my father or the other way around yes yes that won't cause any problems in the family I'm sure very strange hello to Malia hello also if Mohammed this is confusion it is confusion there is a lot of confusion at the moment can I just say once again these rules or this advice only applies to England which makes things even more difficult so if you live in England you can't travel to Wales or Scotland very strange hello Saeed does the cause any mental problems I'm not sure 
I'm just beginning to wonder. Hello also to Francesca. <laughs> Francesca says it is like when a mother says run but do not sweat. Run but don't sweat. The two things conflict with each other. It's like trying to push the the same poles of a magnet. So if you have two magnets and you try to push the same poles together they will repel each other they will push each other apart they conflict with each other they are opposites forks hello forks eagle <coughs> mr duncan how can you make the echo sound on the live stream well fortunately in my studio i have a nice little device which I can use to make all sorts of different sounds. And one of my favorite ones is the echo, 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 echo. Hello, 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 hello. Like that. Guadalupe says, I am concerned about my students and also about my work. I'm a teacher and I work to, in two schools, but now there will be more shifts. So your working times or your schedule during the day will will get larger. You might have more classes to teach because unfortunately the classes will have to be very small. So you can't have 30 or 35 students in one classroom. You can probably have about 10. So you can imagine what what problems that is going to cause so they will be opening the schools as well here in the UK in well when I say the UK I mean England it's so confusing isn't it I live in a very confusing country I really do <laughs> so even the schools they think and this this is this is also crazy by the way they are thinking of opening the schools in July which is of course when most schools will break up for the summer holiday I don't know I really don't know I don't know what to think of it Malia says Mr Duncan we've missed your lovely lessons and your lovely voice thank you very much it's very kind of you so things that conflict you can have conflict in many situations maybe two people who disagree on a certain subject last year there was a lot of conflict in the UK when we had a lot of talk about Brexit the exit from the European Union which is still happening even though no one is talking about it anymore because well let's face it <laughs> we have other things on our minds at the moment hello to Salah Salah Abbas we are working physically and we spend two weeks working isolated from other people at work and then we return back to our home it is a really boring routine so I would imagine if I might be wrong here so maybe you are going to work but you are being kept apart so this is one of the problems if you go back to work and quite often you might work in an environment where there are many people around you such as a factory or an office. So yeah it's really really <laughs> a very strange situation. I thought the previous two months was strange however I think things I really do think that things are going to get much weirder, much stranger in the future. I think so. It is a crazy situation. Yes, I agree with you. No one, and I mean no one in England, can really understand what we are supposed to do. So I'm working today. I've gone back to work. However, I was working anyway because I work from home. So I'm lucky I suppose because I can still do my job at home 
because normally that is where I do my job at home hmm. I'm sorry if this is confusing for you imagine what it's like here people people just don't know what to do they really don't can you tell us how to pronounce the months of the year well that's interesting yes I suppose that's quite a good that's quite a good question well first of all of course we have the first month January then we have February then we have March April May June July August September October November December the only one that people often have difficulty with is February February it's a very hard one to say because you have the letter R in a very strange place February February most people don't bother they just they just say February February <laughs> but the correct pronunciation is February February so that is the second month of the year do, 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 do. Eric says please give some instructions for your lessons where to start what to do just listen well you can listen you can read you can look at the captions subtitles and of course there are captions also here as well so you can actually have captions right now on your screen as you watch this live stream you might not know it so all you have to do is press that button on your keyboard all you have to do is press that button and yes you will have live captions and also for those who are watching on their mobile devices you can press up there can you see so all you have to do is go to your mobile device and go to the settings in that corner and then after that you activate the captions so it's quite easy really to be honest with you it is pretty easy you can have live captions a lot of people don't realize it that you can actually have live captions you can it's amazing you must be freezing mr duncan yes i am i am a little bit cold today i am a little cold yes my my hands especially so today it's only around eight degrees eight celsius today and it's also windy <laughs> Ano Jan Ano Jan Anu oh this is a very interesting question very intriguing who is the real Englishman well I don't think anyone is really a real Englishman to be honest it is a subject that often causes a lot of controversy when we talk about what is an Englishman what is an English person well to be honest these days a real Englishman is anyone who lives here it can be anyone I suppose even me I'm not really a hundred percent English you see so in the past my family was was from another country <laughs> you might not realize that oh hello <laughs> mr. B did you see mr. bumblebee then so I don't think anyone is a real Englishman we are all here in this country if you live here and if you work here if your life is here as far as I'm concerned you are an Englishman so I don't think there is a real Englishman because over the years this country has been invaded by many people the, the Romans invaded we had all sorts of things going on battles wars between the Scots and the English and then we, we fought 
other countries such as France and needless to say Germany so so it's all been going on for for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years so no one is really English we are really talking about a person's nationality so even I'm not really English a hundred percent it's true I'm not joking hello from Azerbaijan Zor hello Zor I hope I pronounced your name right hello Christina you are very lucky mr. Duncan because you work at home this is something that many people do this is something many people do nowadays they do work from home so for many people I suppose life has gone on as normal because normally if you work at home quite often you will be using this technology there is a good chance you will be using this hello Asar what is jumper mr. Duncan this is my jumper it is an item of clothing normally made from wool wool it is an item of clothing normally it has long sleeves and it covers all of your upper body and it keeps you warm when the weather is like this when it's cold hello to Guadeloupe Wow it's windy hello also to Karan Kareem Salah Mr. Duncan I really owe a lot of things to you I just watched about 31 videos then I went to evaluate my level they put me directly in advanced English level in the English Institute thanks a bundle Wow Salah Abaza well done congratulations I know that you are congratulating me and saying thank you to me but also I should say congratulations to you because you did the work you see so learning English is like anything you get out what you put in the more effort the more time you spend doing it the more you will get from it hello to love learning mr. Duncan what is the pronoun <laughs> by the way if you can hear some strange sounds it is the refuse collectors they are collecting all of the recyclable things such as plastic and glass so that is the the noise you can hear behind me how to pronounce pagan pagan well there it is that is how you pronounce it pagan hello also to oh let's say hello to miss Evelyn hello miss Evelyn nice to see you I don't recognize your name is it your first time here on the live stream hello mr. Duncan it is 840 in the morning so now I suppose it must be 847 in the morning in Lima hello to you nice to see you again Nerush is here hello Nerush watching in Ukraine nice to see you as well hello to Tamara it is cold today but you are dressed in very light clothing so underneath I have I have a t-shirt can you see so I have a t-shirt under here and then my jumper is on top so this item of clothing can be called a jumper or we can also call it a sweater sweater hello mr. Duncan what is sarcasm thank you sunshine sarcasm is something that you say but you say it ironically in the in the way that you don't actually mean it you see so you say something but you are not really meaning it you are trying to make a point you are telling the other person something perhaps that they've done wrong maybe if you are waiting for your friend to meet you and they are late they are very late in fact 
so when they arrive you will say oh it's nice to see that you are on time but what you are actually doing you are being sarcastic because that person is not on time they are late so you are being ironic you are saying something sarcastically oh it's nice to see you here on time thank you but the person is late that is sarcasm it really is we have a little break coming up soon we're going to have a look at one of my full English lessons I'm also going to show you something right now would you like to see something nice uh, last night I went to the garden and I couldn't resist filming my lovely rhododendrons they are really starting to come out now look at this oh, wow my lovely rhododendrons all of the beautiful flowers are now coming out you can see they are all beginning to open I think <laughs> I think the flowers I think they look purple however some people might say that they are actually pink but I think they look purple so there you can see my lovely rhododendrons last night as the Sun was beginning to set what I did I went into the garden and I did a little bit of filming in the garden and you can see there are many flowers now starting to open first of all you have the bud and then the bud will open to reveal the flower would you like to see another shot here is another one oh this is nice this is very high quality <laughs> and there is another lovely shot of my rhododendron and I filmed these last night in the garden just as the Sun was beginning to go down and at this time of year there are many plants many flowers now coming out as we leave springtime and as we enter summer lots and lots of flowers are now coming out on the trees including my lovely rhododendron bush <laughs> I love my my rhododendron it always cheers me up I don't know why it is one of my favorite flowers in the garden it always manages to cheer me up mm. do you have any flowers coming out where you live I know there are many flowers starting to emerge and come out oh by the way we do have a subject for those wondering what we are talking about today we will be talking about words connected to words and phrases connected to these words can you see them buy sell rent so today later on we will be looking at the words buy sell rent the differences between these words and the many ways they can be used and also all of the synonyms that go with these words words and phrases connected with buy sell rent that is coming up later on hello to the live chat once again we are going to have a little break hello Anna Pika I think you are losing your weight mr. Duncan I don't see you eating your Jaffa cakes during your live streams I have lost weight I have to be honest with you I, I, I'm quite pleased you might notice <laughs> I cut my hair today as well I actually cut my hair because it was getting very long I don't like my hair when it's long because you can see all of the gray hairs <laughs> coming out of my head so wow the live chat is very busy so yes I, I have lost some weight you are actually right so 
you you i know you're joking because of my jaffa cakes but i haven't eaten any jaffa cakes for a very long time in fact these days i am eating less and less so i think at the moment i'm looking quite quite well quite healthy to be honest with you hello to mick s rent hire yes you rent something you hire something we will be looking at those words a little bit later on we will be oh thank you <laughs> malia says you are looking nice thank you very much i am trying my best to stay healthy during this crazy period of time so that's what i've been trying to do i have still been exercising and of course doing this keeps you very fit and healthy it really does dia hakim says get well to mr steve thank you very much that's very kind of you poor steve is not feeling very well at the moment we are not sure exactly what it is because you can't go to the doctor this is the strange thing another strange thing at the moment if you feel unwell you actually can't go to the doctor you can't go to see a doctor at the moment it is a little bit crazy hello partridge mr duncan do you know our prime minister modi has announced a relief package for the poor and also middle class families as well he has also announced lockdown but with new conditions and rules as well i know in india there have been very strict lockdown rules i still think the winner the winner of the most severe lockdown rules must be philippines i think so apparently the philippi in the philippines they have been threatening to shoot people who don't follow the rules of social distancing I, I saw a very interesting news report last night on about the Philippines about the the president has said if anyone is found to be going out when they shouldn't be they will be shot now that is what you call severe punishment but I would imagine that it does work I, I think it must work when you think about it hello also Ricardo are you enjoying the sounds by the way can I just say those are not my bottles you can hear they're not my bottles okay definitely not Zawa says mr. Duncan how can I improve my speaking my vocabulary is not bad but it, it is difficult for me to use words well building your word power is all about learning new words speaking is merely using those words so maybe the problem is not with your speaking perhaps it is with your vocabulary maybe you need to expand your word power a little bit more perhaps what is that sound we have the refuse collectors they are coming around at the moment collecting all of the recyclable things such as plastic and also bottles I think there are lots of bottles at the moment lots of empty bottles if you if you understand my meaning there I think so hello <laughs> Zuzika hello Zuzika the bottles are all mine really well I can say definitely they are not my bottles just in case anyone says mr. Duncan have you been spending your lockdown getting drunk on wine and beer the answer to that is definitely not i can put my hand on my heart and my other hand on my pancreas or maybe liver 
and say I have not been drinking alcohol during lockdown I haven't I've been very good in fact shall we have a look at one of my full English lessons I will have a little break so I can take my shoes off and give my toes a little wiggle and then I will be back with more English so let's have a look at one of my full English lessons this is an excerpt taken from one of my full English lessons it, it actually oh actually it is full English number 10 and then we will be back live as live can be Do you have an affinity with something? Is there something or someone you have an affinity with? The word affinity means a natural liking for or an understanding of something. A natural connection means that you do not have to force yourself to do it. The connection or understanding comes naturally. For example, to have an affinity with numbers means that you are naturally good at arithmetic. A relationship can form from the affinity between two people. They get along together naturally, without the need to force themselves. Long-term friendships and relationships are often built on a mutual affinity. To have an affinity can also mean a connection between things with similar characteristics. When two things relate, they have an affinity. The affinity shared between animals, plants, places and languages. It's time to take a look at another current buzzword. A buzzword is a phrase or sentence that is used frequently or often. Today's buzzword is engage or engagement the word engage is used a lot these days to express the interest or attention given by those watching or viewing something to engage with someone is to connect with them so as to get their attention interest or involvement if you engage with a person then they are more likely to stay with you a television program must engage with a person or else they will stop watching movie makers politicians newspaper editors all try to keep people interested and involved by trying to engage with those they wish to connect with engagement is the action of connecting with something TV producers are finding it harder to engage with their audience politicians need to engage more with the young I don't know about you but I love receiving good news hearing something positive can really perk you up it makes you feel uplifted and warm there are many ways of expressing surprise and joy at someone's good news that's awesome really that's incredible that's amazing fantastic wow i'm pleased to hear that if the good news involves the person telling it to you, you can say, I'm pleased for you. Congratulations. Well done. Good for you. You might express complete shock and disbelief at the good news. No way. You're kidding. Oh my goodness. For real? I'm speechless. There are many ways of expressing joy at someone's good news. 
When was the last time you received some good news? How did you react to it? With surprise, shock or disbelief? Can you see what I'm doing here? I'm making myself a sandwich. A sandwich is a very convenient snack. You can make one easily. You can rustle up a sandwich very fast. To rustle up means to produce or create a meal with little preparation or time. You can rustle up a meal for someone. Right now, I'm rustling up a snack for myself. I will cut a couple of slices of bread from this loaf. Spread some butter on each slice. Then I will add some filling. Something to go inside the sandwich. You can put almost anything inside a sandwich. Cheese, lettuce, tomato, peanut butter, even slices of banana. Today, I'm going to put some jam in this sandwich. Some people just eat one slice of bread with something spread on top. You can toast a sandwich and enjoy it heated up. The sandwich is often considered as being a very British snack, which is not surprising when you consider that it was invented by an Englishman, John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. Yes, sandwich is not only a snack, it is also a place. <laughs> I've had some messages Mr. Duncan are you going to do your wonderful dance today ah I see you feel a little energetic do you I think so you feel as if you want to exercise your body a little bit maybe you need to stretch your limbs or maybe you need to give your heart a little bit of a workout hmm I like the sound of that and yes quite a few of you noticed in that full English lesson you just watched I was wearing this actual jumper at the start of the lesson you are right and today this jumper this item of clothing is coming in very useful it is keeping my body nice and warm hello to oh wow so many people here today thank you very much for joining me yes you can catch me live on youtube sunday wednesday friday 2 p.m uk time that is when i am on youtube of course over the past few weeks i have been doing daily live streams but that stopped i have stopped that now I have other things that I have to do and here in England things are slowly getting back to normal however <laughs> we have had some very confusing advice from the government here in the UK Mosen says I like tuna sandwich oh yes referring to the full English lesson that we just watched I love a sandwich in fact I'm going to let you in on a secret just before I started today's live stream mr. Steve made a lovely sandwich I didn't eat it because I didn't have time so at the moment in the kitchen prepared for me is a lovely salmon sandwich 
so that is what I'm going to have as soon as I finish today's live stream I will be having my lovely salmon sandwich which has been prepared just for me by mr. Steve isn't that nice Lewis hello Lewis mr. Steve should have gone to the doctor he has been <laughs> maybe he was poisoned by the cleaning product that he used to clean the oven it is very dangerous I did wonder you see this is something that Steve does sometimes I think Steve I know you you are going to say that I'm talking behind his back I'm not but sometimes Steve can be a little bit reckless I think so yes sometimes he does things without thinking too much about it because he's very excited he gets he gets swept away by the moment so that's the reason why sometimes Steve does things without thinking too much so yes he did he used a very dangerous poisonous thing a very harmful thing the other day on the oven in the kitchen you are right however I think maybe at the moment I think Steve has a little bit of a bug something that is making him feel under the weather Beatrice Mr. Duncan is it correct to say sing to me or sing for me to be honest with you both are correct so you might say sing to me you are asking that person to address you directly with a song sing for me is a very similar request you are asking someone to sing for you so they are very similar in meaning to be honest but I think the first one sing to me is more direct it is a it is a very direct request I think so Mauricio Mr. Duncan I really missed you during this weekend I saw many recorded live streams that you did before so I think there is no conflict that you were talking when the information comes up from politicians some of the messages have been very confusing they have in this country how can I tackle the problem how can I face the problem of being speechless in discussion clubs sometimes they talk about topics that are very strange to me how can I tackle the problem my advice there would be to ask questions if there is something that people are talking about and you don't understand it just ask ask if they can explain what what they're talking about or maybe if they are using a word that you don't understand you could just ask could you please tell me what what you mean by that would you mind explaining what that means could you tell me what that means I don't quite understand what you are talking about Husna says mr. Duncan is hangry oh I like that one yes you are joining two words together H hang hangry you see so it is hungry your stomach is hungry but also you feel angry because you are hungry so we yes we combine those two words together to make hangry <laughs> hangry I like that one hello to Christina sometimes the change of season can cause exhaustion I think you yes I think that is a very reasonable point to make we often find that our mood changes as the seasons change however I always feel especially excited during spring and early summer I do like this time of year I really do like it very much Sergio says don't let Steve play with matches yeah, don't worry I I, I hide everything everything's hidden away from Steve he can't get near them 
the matches a anything that that is flammable I keep them all safely hidden away so Steve will not get up to any more mischief hello to if you keep entering the same message again and again I will probably ignore you to be honest <laughs> it won't help you to be seen it's more likely to help you to be ignored so please don't keep sending the same message because you are not giving other people a chance you have to be fair in this world Valeria is Mr. Steve better he is a little bit better but he has been feeling quite unwell over the past few days so I'm not really sure you see I'm not really sure how to exercise new words while speaking well first of all you can practice the words by yourself you can repeat them sometimes learning a new word involves reading listening and repeating as well so they are all very important <laughs> political questions I have to be very careful when we are talking about politics so I don't mind talking about my country where I live when I say my country I don't mean the country belongs to me I just mean here where I live so I don't mind talking about the politicians and the government in this country because this is where I live but I don't normally like talking too much about other countries and their politics to be honest you can get into a lot of trouble <laughs> hello to Tanya hello Tanya nice to see you here thank you very much for joining me today we are talking about quite a few subjects today we are going to talk about words connected with well I will show you shall I if I can find them <laughs> I wish you could see the chaos that is happening around me I wish you could see all of the chaos that is going on here we go we are looking at words and phrases connected with buy sell rent so I thought we would go through these because there are many words you might not even realize how many there are so when we talk about the, the word buy that normally means something that you are taking in exchange for money so you take an item or maybe you receive a service and then you give money in exchange buy then we have sell well sell is the opposite way round. so you have an item the other person will give you money and then you will give them the item or the service and then of course rent when we talk about rent we are borrowing something for a short period of time however we are paying for that privilege you pay for something that you will keep for a certain period of time okay let's dive right in to this subject are you ready we have a lot of words here by the way so I hope you are ready to digest some words because there are very many the first word well I suppose it's the word that I just mentioned buy buy one of the interesting things about this word is that it looks like it shouldn't be pronounced buy <laughs> because there is a letter U in the middle buy buy you buy something you go to the shop you go to the shop and you buy something another word you can use purchase purchase you purchase something you buy something you go to the shop to purchase something 
so you are taking something from a place however you will also exchange that thing for money you purchase something you go to the shop to purchase some food maybe you go to the shop to purchase some new clothes maybe a new hat maybe a new jumper purchase purchase we can also use this word in other ways as well besides buying something purchase can also mean movement the amount of movement or grip or force on something purchase very interesting word another one as an aeroplane comes over my house I can see the pilot waving to me from his cockpit mr. Duncan steady on steady on mr. Duncan obtain when you buy something of course when you buy something you obtain something you get something obtain you buy something you take an item you get something and then you give some money in return obtain so you might say that you obtain something with cash you obtain an item you get something from a person or a shop by exchanging the item for money you obtain something obtain I like that one I like that word I must say we are using some very very nice words today oh here's a good one I like this one <laughs> I like this one can you see this word do you know how to pronounce this word procure it's a very strange word isn't it procure if you procure something you are obtaining something you take something quite often you will take it voluntarily sometimes you might take it involuntary you might procure something by force you will take something from another person you procure something you obtain it you take it of course you can also buy something as well you use money you give money to someone and then you receive something in return procure I like that word that is an interesting word procure and the good thing about watching my live streams is you can have captions don't forget that you can have captions all you have to do is press that on your keyboard don't enter it on the live chat you just press take your finger and press the keyboard that's all you have to do you don't have to enter the number or the word or the letter just press C and then your captions will appear on your keyboard and also on your computer screen very nice here's another one. Oh, now sometimes when you buy something sometimes you buy something that is very expensive or very extravagant you will pay a lot of money for something you will spend a lot of money here is an expression we often use in English splash out you will suddenly spend some money on something that is extravagant expensive something that you've always wanted maybe there is an item of jewelry maybe a gold necklace or maybe some nice pearl earrings <laughs> I think I would look lovely I think I would look lovely with pearl earrings splash out you spend a lot of money on one thing suddenly you splash out 
maybe you go to a very expensive restaurant to have a really nice meal you splash out splash out it means you spend a lot of money on one thing you will splash out <laughs> you can almost imagine the money flying out of someone's hand splash out I I am going to splash out on a new car I'm going to splash out on some new clothes I'm going to splash out on a very expensive holiday maybe I'm going to take a cruise around the world however at the moment I won't be able to I will have to swim instead because there aren't any cruise ships unfortunately so maybe instead of going on a cruise ship maybe I could just swim instead here's an interesting phrase so quite often you will spend to buy so this is not an expression this is something I'm just putting on the screen now just to show the the way in which you spend money to buy something spend to buy so the action spend allows you to buy spend buy you give money to receive something in return you spend to buy <laughs> here's another one. Oh, i like this one hello platina platina has just joined me on the live stream hello platina nice to see you here today welcome to my garden i'm in the garden today here's another one now this might not look like any word connected with spending however it is you might blow some money you might blow your salary that means you will spend it all at once you spend everything you blow your money you blow it you spend all of your money maybe you spend all of your money on an expensive holiday or a new car but you spend it all maybe you win the lottery perhaps you have been very lucky and you have won some money on the lottery unfortunately you get very excited and you start spending the money and then suddenly one day you realize that all the money has gone <laughs> you blow your money you blow it all it's all gone you blow your money it has gone you have blown it all it's all gone blow you blow your money I had a million pounds in the bank but unfortunately I became very excited and I kept spending the money and now I have blown all of the money blow or blown if you are using the past tense to blow your money is to spend it all quite often people will spend their salary they blow their salary or their wages over the weekend they blow it all blow it it's all gone they blow we often use that expression in British English but you might also hear it used in American English as well here's another one very similar to the previous one very similar very similar squander squander you squander your money you waste your money you spend it on silly things you spend it on ridiculous items you waste your money you spend it you spend your money recklessly without thought squander you squander your money you spend it in a very careless way squander I've spent all my money 
I decided to squander the money it's gone squander you waste your money you have wasted all of your money acquire now this is interesting because normally the word acquire means to get something you receive something however we could also use acquire to describe paying for something and then receiving the item you acquire I got it from someone I bought it I acquired it you acquire something by getting it quite often by spending money you buy something you acquire something you have got something you acquire it acquire I like that one do 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 you get hold of something you can get hold of something by spending money so if you want something very badly maybe you are desperate for something maybe something that is very rare you try to get hold of it quite often you will have to spend a lot of money to buy something that is rare something that people desire you try to get hold of it quite often you will have to spend a lot of money to get hold of something quite often you need to spend a lot of money get hold of something Lewis oh thank you Lewis Mendez you can also say that the football player squandered a lot of opportunities for a goal or of a goal yes so maybe squander means to waste or to do something without thought or to be careless yes you are right so maybe a chance maybe an opportunity you can squander your opportunity something that comes your way but you waste it you waste the opportunity thank you very much Lewis for that very interesting thank you here's an interesting phrase we use this quite a lot in British English maybe you need some work doing in your house maybe you need some decorating or maybe some building work doing by a professional builder he will come to your house he will do the work however when you have to pay something you well you have to pay money but you are also buying his service as well you buy his service however sometimes the person doing the work will ask for cash in hand have you ever heard of this expression if someone wants cash in hand it means they want notes they want money so they will not take a check they will not be paid directly into their bank account they want cash in hand this expression means you want the money directly in your hand quite often someone will do this because they don't want to pay tax if you have cash in your hand as payment for a service or a job it means you don't have to pay tax so that is one of the ways of avoiding paying tax income tax people will ask to be paid cash in hand cash in hand it does happen a lot here in England here in the UK people quite often will do work for you and then they will demand they will ask if you can pay them cash in hand <laughs> yes Sergio they want 
the money to be undeclared if you declare your money it means you are telling someone what you are earning what you are getting from the job or from the work that you are doing here's an interesting word swap this is a type of sale I know it doesn't seem like it but it is so to swap one thing for another quite often we will do this especially as children I remember growing up quite often I would swap some of my toys for one of my friends toys so we would swap our toys the toys would be swapped so you might describe this as a form of payment you are paying for something however you are paying for an item with an item you already own so swapping to swap quite often means you are giving something to someone in return for another thing that they will then give to you swap swap exchange is another one we can use we can use the word exchange and look there it is as if by magic you exchange you exchange things maybe your friend has a car and maybe you have a speedboat why not you can I suppose but maybe your friend says oh I tell you what I tell you what I will do I will swap my car for your speedboat you will exchange those items exchange them so when we talk about exchange quite often it is anything that we are giving and taking so I give something to you you give something to me we can also use this as a way of describing paying money so money is the value of exchange you exchange one thing for money to buy something here's another thing we can use trade now this is interesting because this can be used in more than one way you can use this as a noun and also you can use this as a verb if you swap something you exchange one thing for another trade you will trade something I will trade one thing for another thing trade can also be the thing that you are selling maybe you are in the car trade that means you sell cars maybe you are in the fashion trade you sell clothing maybe you are in building trade then that is a service that you provide you help someone build a house you are in the building trade so that is referring to the type of service that you give or maybe the thing that you sell mm, interesting here is a phrase that we use quite often in English Doo -doo -doo. you might buy time you can pay for time but also you can save some time that will give you more chances to do something so this particular expression means to give yourself more time you buy some time however this expression does not always mean that you have to pay money it can just mean to give yourself some extra time maybe you are waiting for something to happen but it will happen sooner than you want it to so what you try to do you try to talk the other person into waiting a little bit longer you want to buy time but in this particular sense you are not necessarily paying money it means you are just getting more time 
the person will give you longer to do something because you ask them you ask them you buy some time but it doesn't always mean that you pay money not always hello to oh hello to Salah the the word merchant yes well we will come to that in a moment we will come to that in a moment finally in our group of words connected to buy you buy something and as the past tense you bought buy bought you buy a new car you bought a new car you buy some shopping you bought some shopping so buy is the present bought is the past you bought something from town you bought something from the shop you are going into town to buy something you will buy it you have already bought it already mm. Ooh. we are coming to our second group of words wow i must be honest with you <laughs> we have a lot to talk about today we have quite a lot to talk about here we go then would you like to have a look, look at some more words hello Andy I always like to buy time so I can think in English yes that's a good one actually maybe you you are trying to translate something but you have to do it very quickly so you try to buy some time you try to make the other person wait a little bit longer to give you time to translate the words I like that yeah pretty good I like it a lot here we go so we've had buy now we are going to look at sell sell so you might say that this is the opposite it is the reverse of buy it is the opposite so I will buy something now I am going to sell something buy sell so you sell something a person who will sell is the seller seller you sell things you you sell clothing you sell cars you are the seller the person who is doing the selling is the seller they sell something the opposite of course of buy a person who sells can be known as the vendor 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 some people say vendor vendor so a vendor or vendor is a person who sells and you can see here you have also the verb vend you vend something you are giving something out quite often in exchange for money vend so you might I don't know you might stand on the street corner selling newspapers you are a newspaper vendor or vendor so we will often pronounce that word vendor vendor a newspaper vendor maybe there is an automatic machine in your office that will give you food or drink we call that a vending machine a machine that sells food all you have to do is put money into the machine press the magic buttons and then the food or the drink will come out we can call that a vending machine vend you vend you sell you are a person who sells things you are a vendor 
or vendor. A person who sells things can also be described as a retailer. Retailer. Retail is what we call any shop any business anything that is selling items is retail so anything that you are selling in any capacity or any area is retail the person doing it is a retailer retailer a person who owns a shop a person who runs their own shop is a retailer they sell things that is their job that is their job they have to sell things that is what they do when you sell you normally have to do or make a deal you deal with someone if you are buying something or selling something you deal with that person so if you are selling you are maybe asking for a certain price you are making a deal the person who is buying something from you might also deal with you however the person who is selling is often known as the dealer a person who sells things will be described as a dealer dealer a car dealer a clothing dealer there are many ways of using the word dealer to describe all sorts of sales or selling you are a dealer I'm sure there is one that you can think of as well I'm sure there is one that you can think of out there I'm pretty sure of it <laughs> here's another one trade trade well this is very similar to deal so if you trade it means you are normally having some sort of exchange so maybe I have a product that I want to sell and you want to buy it we trade trade a person who sells things can also be described as a trader trader a person who sells things trader the trader is a person who is buying or selling but quite often we think of a person who provides something a service or an item in exchange for money trader when you sell something quite often you will have a sale so again this is an interesting word because it can be used in more than one way so the sale is the action you are describing the action of exchanging money for an item sale we can also use this word to describe bargains or a discount you are having a sale the past tense of sale is sold so you can see sale sold so this is the past tense of sale the sale is being carried out you have sold an item you have sold that thing to another person there is of course a very nice word that we can use when we make a sale normally in a shop or in retail we will say oh, transaction I like this word I like this word this is a great word transaction a transaction is a sale a sale a transaction 
you have given an item in exchange for money you sell something in a shop the, the other person will give you the money that is a transaction transaction it's an interesting word because you can see from the word what it means trans is moving from one place to another such as transport so a transaction is movement in the form of an action which of course is selling or buying it is a transaction a transaction we have another one here Hello to Lewis. Hello also Karan Kareem. There seems to be a lot a lot going on at the moment on the live chat. Speculator. A speculator. That is a person who normally tries to guess or using their own knowledge try to work out the value of something or whether or not something will increase in value or of course decrease a speculator speculator hello Peter nice to see you here today some of the words will come from Latin yes they will in fact you might find a lot of the words that are connected to money and also selling will be connected to Greek or Latin wholesale I like this word this is an interesting word I remember many years ago my father used to buy food because he, he he had a catering business and also he used to work in a hotel for many years when I was a child my father worked in a hotel in the end he became the assistant manager but sometimes he would have to buy food many of the things that the hotel needed to, to run such as food for the restaurant so quite often you would buy things wholesale when we say wholesale we are saying that you can buy things in large quantities large numbers large amounts of items you can buy many things also you will receive discount as well quite often the more things you buy the the more you will save so when we talk about wholesale we often talk about a place where you can buy many things many items many of the same items and the more things you buy the more you save the cheaper the things will be here's an interesting word if you buy many things at the same time we can say that you buy them in bulk bulk so bulk just means large or a large quantity bulk a big thing a large amount bulk you go to the wholesale store or the wholesale warehouse and you will buy your items in bulk you will buy many things at the same time from a wholesale market or a wholesale warehouse oh here we go I think someone mentioned this earlier I think it may have been Sergio I'm not sure market so when we talk about market we are talking about the area where things are exchanged the value the sale of items how much something costs how much something is valued at market so in this sense we are using it as a verb so in this particular sense we are not using it as a noun we are using it as a verb so market is to sell you are selling something you are trying to get people to buy your products 
you market the items you are trying to persuade people to buy your things you are that is what you are doing here's another word no yeah. merchant now I think someone mentioned this word earlier merchant a person who is a merchant again they are normally transporting goods or they are selling goods a merchant a seller a person who is selling things a merchant If you are buying and selling something you are a broker broker a broker is a person who buys and sells quite often they will sell stock maybe of a company or maybe the value of something that is exchanged on the market a broker is a person who will buy and sell so to broker is the action of buying and selling so you might for example have a stockbroker a stockbroker is a person who buys and sells stock something that many people are talking about at the moment <laughs> stock <laughs> selling your stock buying your stock here we go here's a phrase as we come towards the end of our selling and then next we will look at rent next sell out to sell out is to have nothing left of a certain item so maybe if you remember a few weeks ago people were buying toilet paper and many of the shops said that they would soon sell out they would have no toilet paper left they would sell out so if you sell out it means you have sold all of your stock you sell out and the past tense is sold out do you have any toilet paper I'm sorry we've sold out we have sold out of toilet paper you sell out you have sold out you have nothing left stock again earlier we talked about the stock market here we are talking about items or goods so the things that you have in your shop that you want to sell or that you are going to sell your stock are the things that you will sell another word you can use is goods so the things you will sell your stock they are your goods the things you sell in your shop it is your stock stock quite often in a shop there will be an area where you keep all of the stock and that is called a stock room stock room a stock room is a place where you keep your stock supply now this is interesting because this word can be used as both a noun and a verb so the supply just means the things that are available to buy however supply can also be the action of giving something to a person in exchange for money you supply you give a service you allow people to buy items from you so supply can be used as both a noun and verb my supply is in the back of the shop I will supply this to you I will supply it to you supply is the noun supply is the verb 
oh we have one more selling supplying buying purchasing here we have both supply and demand quite often one of the real secrets of having a successful business is being able to keep up with supply and demand if you want to supply something to many people you have to make sure that you know what they want and that is where we use the word demand supply is what you are giving demand is what people want so one of the secrets of having a successful business especially if you are selling things you have to make sure that you get this right you have to supply the demand so we often use this in business we say supply and demand as Christmas time approaches we often find that many shops are selling certain toys for children supply and demand is a very important thing to bear in mind at that time of year because you have to make sure that you have the things in your shop that people will want supply and demand this is a phrase that you will hear a lot when we are talking about retail or shops you need to make sure you have enough of what people want and that is it that is selling so we have had buy we've had sell however what if you want something for a very short time what if you want something for a short period of time so maybe you don't want to buy something maybe you just want to borrow it for a short time we can say I'm back we can say rent rent to rent something is to take something for a short period of time so you don't want it forever and ever and ever you just want to use it whilst paying for it at the same time I remember years ago <laughs> I remember years ago at home we used to rent our television I'm not joking because because my family didn't have much money we couldn't afford to buy a television so we didn't buy a television we used to rent our television from a company so we would pay a small amount of money each month so we could have the television in the house you would rent a TV and also <laughs> I'm just having a very interesting memory here pop into my head I also remember for a long period of time we used to have to put money in the back of the television so it would work I'm not joking there was a company many years ago called telebank and I remember this now it's it's just popped in my head telebank and what you would do you, they would give you a television however it wouldn't work the only way it would work is if you put money in the back there was a box that was attached to the back of the television so you would actually put money into the TV and turn a little handle you would turn it and then the money would fall inside and then the television would stay on for a certain period of time but of course after the money ran out the TV would go off and so you would have to put some more money in the television isn't that strange so yes that's something I've just remembered a little memory that popped in my head I do remember sometimes we used to have to rent our television because we couldn't afford to buy one 
we couldn't even afford to buy a television when I was a child so instead we used to rent the television <laughs> and sometimes we would have to put money inside the TV into the back so we could watch it and can you believe the money would always run out when you were watching something good on television maybe you were watching a TV show and 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 way back in the past they would only show a TV program once and that's it so if you missed it you couldn't watch it again because there was no video recorder there was no Netflix there was no streaming service in the 1970s we had none of those things so if you missed your program that's it it was gone and sometimes you would be watching a TV show and it, it, it might get to a very interesting part a dramatic moment and you were getting really excited because something is about to happen and then suddenly bzzz, the television would go off because the money had run out it used to happen a lot very annoying Salah says it is a ludicrous idea to put money in the television it is hilarious yes we used to do that I'm not joking I'm not joking there was a little box and you would put the money into the box and then the television would come on for a short period of time I'm not joking I wish I was <laughs> I wish I was higher here's another word you can use if you want to borrow something for a short period of time you will hire something higher so you will have something for a short period of time maybe you will hire a car or maybe if you are going to a wedding you might hire a wedding suit a nice suit hire you hire a car you hire some clothes for a wedding hire you might hire something here's another one <laughs> Karan Kareem says do they live in the 1950s well I didn't live in the 1950s I'm not that old I'm not that old not yet anyway but no I I didn't live in the 1950s I did however live in the late 1960s and also 1970s here's another word lease lease you take out a lease so this is something that you rent for normally a certain period of time so maybe you will take a lease uh, uh, for a house so maybe you will live in a house but you won't buy it you will just rent the house so you will have a lease lease it is another word for rent lease when we talk about property maybe a small apartment or maybe a, a house let so if you let something it means you are allowing people to rent your property let I love that word because it's so simple so quite often outside apartments or sometimes houses you might see this word you might also see the word to let to let so that means that that property is available to hire it is available for hire let so quite often we will use this word when we are talking about hiring or using property property you don't buy the property you rent the property you hire the property Tamara asks Mr. Duncan you are supplying educational services aren't you thank you Tamara yes I am I am supplying some education because that's what I do you see that's what I do right here on YouTube mm -hmm. here's
here's an interesting thing this is something that you should never do or something that you might get into trouble if you do it sublet so sometimes this is what people do they will they will rent a house but then they will rent the house themselves out to other people so we call this subletting so if you sublet it means you are renting the house but then you are then renting that house to other people and maybe four or five people will then live in that house so you will make a profit so you will live in that house on your own you will pay one rent and then you will then you will then rent that house to other people so they will live in that house so you can actually make a lot of money if you sublet however quite often this is not allowed you are not allowed to sublet because then you are making extra profit the landlord is renting the property to you but you are making more money because you have decided to sublet a lot of landlords a lot of owners of properties will not let you sublet they will get very angry if you sublet to rent something is to let something rent hire let charter now here's an interesting word <laughs> this also sounds a little old-fashioned and that's because it is it is a very old-fashioned word this if you charter something it means you hire or rent something for you to use maybe you charter a boat so you will hire the boat and you will use it to travel around in maybe you will go to other places maybe you will use it to take some goods from one place to another charter you can also charter an airplane so you want to use the airplane for travel charter charter if you want to sell something if you want to actually sell something or maybe if you want to rent something you will often license something so you can license something for rent maybe the name of a company or maybe you want to use the name of a famous brand such as McDonald's or KFC so you license that name so the person will pay you to use that name and quite often we will use the word license license you are paying for the use of something license that can also be used as a noun by the way as well so not just a verb but also a noun I'm sure someone will tell me in a moment hello to Fatima oh Fatima says my brother rented an apartment to get married I see I suppose also if you want to get married if you want to get married in a church I suppose you would also rent the church you would hire the church so sometimes you have to hire maybe a building for a short period of time oh now here's an interesting word I like this one franchise franchise this is something that can be used as a noun and a verb if you want to use the name of a famous company or maybe if you want to use the name of a well-known brand a good example of course is McDonald's so we always think of McDonald's 
when we think of fast food however McDonald's restaurants are part of a franchise so franchise means that you open your own branch your own restaurant however you use the name of that company McDonald's and then you pay McDonald's for all of the food that they then deliver and then you pay them and then you make a profit from the food that you sell and quite often we will use the word franchise franchise so you might have an outlet and the person who is running the outlet the manager or the person who owns the franchise is actually paying to use the name you will pay McDonald's for the food and also the name above the door franchise so when you see McDonald's in your high street quite often it is a franchise someone else is paying to use that name and also to sell that food something very profitable by the way a very profitable way of doing business if you sell your product through a franchise we are talking about words connected to rent here is a phrase rent out if you rent out something it means you are allowing a person to borrow something and then they will pay you for it so you rent out something I might rent out my house I rent out my house so you will pay me some money and then I will let you stay in my house so I rent out my house I rent out my property the general term for that is rental rental so when we talk about anything that we rent anything that we hire the general term the general word is rental rental so any business any type of business that involves hiring out something maybe clothing cars machinery rental is the word that we use it is a general noun to mean anything involved with renting quite often when you rent something you will have to sign a rental agreement so quite often you will have to sign a contract or something to say that you have to pay for that thing whilst you use my product my house you have to pay and you must sign a rental agreement so this is something that is legally legally binding something you must sign before you can rent a house or a car you will often have to sign a rental agreement mm. hello to the live chat I will be going in a few moments we are doing some overtime today we are going longer than two hours I've now been with you for two hours and 15 minutes I've been here for a long time we have one more so we've been talking about buying we've been talking about selling and also renting when you rent something you will always have to pay money normally every month so each month you will rent the item maybe a car maybe you will rent a flat or an apartment sometimes you might find that you can't pay the rent I can't pay the rent I have no money I can't pay the rent 
you will have rent arrears rent arrears unfortunately you can't pay the rent so now you have rent arrears the word arrear means something that is owed you have to give something because you have agreed to do it you sign the agreement that says you will pay the rent every month unfortunately now you have rent arrears that means you are behind with your rent you owe money you owe rent so you might also say that the rent is overdue the rent is overdue if something is overdue it means it is owed it must be given it is now overdue you have rent arrears sometimes if you can't pay the rent if you don't have enough money to pay your rent you will end up with rent arrears arrears to get into debt if you owe someone money you will be in arrears not very nice and that's it that is it everyone we have come to the end of another live stream i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you've enjoyed today's live stream a lot of information today don't forget you can watch this again and again and again you can watch this once or a thousand times if you want and don't forget everything is free it doesn't cost you anything however if you want to make a small donation you are more than welcome to do so it would be very nice if you would like to make a small donation please feel free I've lost my mouse <laughs> where's my mouse gone <laughs> that's interesting my mouse has disappeared oh there it is <laughs> I lost my mouse then isn't it annoying when you lose your mouse it really is so yes as I just said you can make a donation if you want you don't have to but if you want to make a donation you are more than welcome to do so to help my work continue forever and ever when am I back with you oh I am back with you on Friday Friday I will be with you again from 2 p.m. UK time I will be back with you once more I hope today's lesson has been helpful and useful I hope it has been useful of course I'm not going just yet because we have one more thing to do I think you know what it is yes before we go and also as a way of helping me warm up because I'm freezing cold at the moment it is not a warm day it is actually a very cold day today before we go we are going to have a little dance would you like to this is the piece of music that people have been going crazy over during the past few days we are going to have a little dance and that is how we are ending today's live stream i will see you on friday 2 p.m uk time but now it is time to stretch those limbs are you ready yes i'm ready it's time to have some jazz in paris
exists. It is time to go. It is time to say goodbye. Stretch those limbs. Stretch those limbs. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching. Thank you very much for your company. <laughs> Sandrine says you are the most interesting teacher I've ever known. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed uh, the dance. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. I hope you have enjoyed all of it in its entirety. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching. See you on Friday 2 p.m. UK time. We will be back. We are back. We will be back. I'm pretty sure of it on Friday. I hope you will be here because I will be here. And of course, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Until Friday, 2 p.m. UK time. This is Mr. Duncan for the final time today saying thanks for watching. And of course, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Mm. Ta-ta for now.